This is Anthony Priscilla picking up after our break, doing more logarithms with my college algebra class now. We had already defined a logarithm to be the exponent that you put on the number b in order to get the number x. We did some examples and we went on and formally said that exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other. The fog x equals x and golf x equals x, f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. And we're ready to state some properties of logarithms. I'm going to state three properties of logarithms without any sort of uh, proof. It's not something you should say, oh, it's just obvious. So here's the first one something called the product rule log base b of m times n log base b of m times n is equal oops there went the lights is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. I'm stating these three rules without any proof. It has something to do with those exponent rules. Um, maybe in another video one day I'll go through and derive these. Okay. <coughs> no, pardon me. But uh, right now I'm just stating the rules. The log of a product is the sum, can be written as the sum of two logarithms. Next, the quotient rule. Most people can sort of guess the quotient rule, having seen the product rule. If we can rewrite multiplication as the sum of two logarithms, most people figure out pretty fast or guess. Hey, we should be able, probably we can rewrite division as what? Yes, subtraction. Did y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. So, minus. And one other rule, something called the uh, power rule of logarithms. Power rule, log base b of m raised to some power, I'll say n, equals, you can move this exponent down in front and write it as multiplication. So the exponent will be written as n times log base b of m. And that's a direct result of the first rule, the product rule, which we haven't stated. But if you could think of m squared as m times m, and you have M and M there. So you could just add them together and say 2. So most people can convince themselves of that one. Again, one day we'll go through and uh, drop these. Now what we're going to be doing is expanding logarithms using those properties. Expand, let's say log base 2 of x cubed y to the fourth over of uh, what variable do I want to use? And a to the fifth c squared. First, we want to expand this logarithm using the properties. When I say the properties, I mean the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. Now, I've stated it in that order, product, quotient, power, but really the way we're going to go through them, we're going to use the quotient rule, then the product rule, uh, and then the power rule. So we're going to start off with the quotient rule because there's a fraction here. And we can write this as log base 2 of the top 
minus log base 2 of the bottom. Now, once we've done that, inside each of these sets of parentheses, you'll notice there's a product. So we can now use the product rule there. So I'm going to rewrite this one here as log base 2 of x cubed plus log base 2 of y to the fourth. It's going to seem sort of lengthy, but once we're through with it, we're going to see if we can develop a pattern and be able to do this all just in our head one step, okay? So I've got use the product, excuse me, quotient rule first. Now I'm using the product rule, rewriting the log of a product as the sum of two logarithms. Same thing here, log base 2 of a to the fifth plus log base 2 of c squared. But what I've written right there isn't really correct. We want to subtract all of that. I put parentheses around that. Does it sort of give a hint of what I'm thinking we're going to have to do next? You've got to distribute this minus. So the order that we're going to go here is quotient rule, product rule, distribute the minus, and then use the power rule. So distributing the minus, we have log base 2 of x to the third plus log base 2 of y to the fourth, distributing the minus, minus log base 2 of a to the fifth, minus log base 2 of c squared. And now, using the power rule, carry down those exponents. So 3 log base 2 of x plus 4 log base 2 of y minus 5 log base 2 of a minus 2 log base 2 of c. Look at this long enough and hard enough I think you can figure out how to skip these three lines, right? How do I cover that up? Oh, yes. Can you see my new watch? It's a York Gray. I'll try it like this. Uh, but how can I cover up all of that and still just come up with the answer? That's the question. Well, let's look closely at the original problem and at the answer. There are four logarithms in the answers. Well, the way I word it is we separate logarithms at multiplication and division. One, two, three, four. The factors that are here in the bottom have a minus sign in front of them. The factors on top have a, a, a plus. Well, there's not a plus in front of the three, but we sure assume it. The exponents go in front of the letter L. Okay. So let's just try to expand one using those patterns. You separate at multiplication and division. Let me say it again. Separate them at multiplication and division. So you have one, two, three, four logarithms. Then you um, have minuses for this in front of the stuff that's in the bottom. So should be two minuses. The exponents go in front of the letter L. The stuff on top has pluses in front of it. So if we wanted to expand, it's going to look terrible. Log. I'm just going to say log. If you write L-O-G without a base, that's called the common logarithm, and it's assumed to be a base 10 there. So if I say expand log, and that's base 10 of, and here are the variables, uh, w to the 1 third, x to the 1 half, 
over c to the two fifths. I'm deliberately making this messy. Uh, a to the one third y. We're going to expand this, and again, I didn't put a base. We'll assume that's base ten. That's standard notation. If you write log without a base, you assume it's base 10, and that's called the common logarithm. So to expand this, I'm going to separate it at multiplication and division. That's going to determine how many logarithms there are. Right here's division, and I'm putting dots wherever there's multiplication. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there should be five logarithms. How many minus signs will there be? Well, there's going to be one heat, one in front of the C, the A, the Y, so three minus signs. So it's going to look like I'm just writing out the answer, which is what I'm doing. So here goes. I write one third log W. Notice the exponent goes in front of the letter L. Then because the x is in the top, I write a plus, then the exponent, log x, stuff here, and now I'll, we move to the bottom, so a minus in front of the two fifths, log c, then another minus, one third, log a, and then another minus, just log y. Notice I didn't put a number in front of the L because it wasn't an exponent. Well, other than a 1. Of course, there's a 1 up there on the y. If you feel a need to put a 1 there. And here it is. It's a nice way. What we're doing is called expanding logarithms. And if you haven't figured this out in math, especially now, well, all throughout math. You do it one way, then you do it backwards. We're going to expand logarithms, and then we're going to condense logarithms. Could you figure out a way to take this and go backwards? Well, sure. Could you take this answer here and go back to that? How would you go backwards? Well, you'd be saying, okay, the numbers in front of the L are the exponents. The stuff that has the minus in front of it, that's what goes on the bottom. The numbers in front of the L are the exponents. The stuff that has the minus in front of it goes on the bottom. The stuff that has the plus in front goes on top. So... This is expanding logarithms. We have time to do one example. This is problem number seven. And you're going to have to get the hang of what I'm about to do. Whenever we have a radical and we're working with logarithms, you should write that as a fractional exponent. This one-half exponent, excuse me, this square root is the same thing as a one-half exponent. So rewrite any radical. If it had been a cube root, you'd write it as one-third exponent. A fourth root, you'd write it as a one-fourth exponent, and so forth. Now this looks like 76, so I better put a dot there. That's seven times. 6 to the 1 half. So I'm separating it at multiplication and division. So there's going to be 1, 2, 3 logarithms. How many minus signs? There are only 1. Now, when you write this out, you start off log base 4 of 7. Sometimes students want to put the 7 in front of the L. No, it's the exponent that goes in front of the L. 
and there wasn't an exponent on the 7. If you just had to put a number, there would be a 1 in front of the L. Then a plus 1 half log base 4 of 6. Notice the e this one had an exponent. So the exponent goes in front of the L. Minus log base 4 of 3. And what I'm covering up here is the fact that it's multiple choice. So let's see. Mm, this one. On number 8, this is A times B over C times D. Let me write that a little bigger. It's A times B over C times D. Well, there's going to be two minus signs, four logarithms, so log of base 2 of A plus log base 2 of B minus log base 2 of C minus log base 2 of D. There. And it's another multiple choice. I'm thinking it's C. Now we keep seeing the option for cannot be simplified. Here's one that cannot be simplified. If we had something log base 2 of x plus y minus w. That can't be simplified. Why? But you can't separate it. You separate multiplication and division. You do not separate at addition and subtraction. Here's a wrong answer for something like this. This is what students are writing. It's wrong. That's what the big red X means. They'll just try to distribute the log base 2. But you see that log base 2 is a function. You can't distribute it the same way you would if it were multiplication of some numbers. So that's why on these multiple choice it will give you the option cannot be simplified. Let's take another break right now, okay?